morning, good morning, good morning. It is good to see all of you here this morning with the cooler temperatures, and uh, we are having some spring-like weather in Nebraska, which is exciting, I think, anyways. Um, and despite all of the, in spite of all of the allergies that are there. So the, I want to remind you that next Sunday is Pentecost. And so I highly encourage you to wear something red. So whether that be your red fur, a red hat, uh, a red robe, whatever red that you own. Um, whatever red that you own, wear it tomorrow or next Sunday for Pentecost. We will be having a celebration because it is the birth of the church. So that is a good thing. Um, other than that, I want to say thank you again for everyone that, for all the emails and donations to the vestments and uh, cards and textbook messages and all that stuff that, and gifts that people have given me. For graduation, I really, really support, or I really support, I really, really appreciate your support and your prayers and celebrating that day with me. And with that, we have announcements. You can see that I was aware that Pentecost is coming up, but can never remember the date, so I hedged my bets. Uh, we do have a few announcements for today. Uh, Coming up next, this coming Saturday on the 27th is a church work day. Uh, the trustees would love it if everybody could come and help. Uh, bring a rake or shovel, your gloves. If you don't have these things, that's fine. We have some spares from nine in the morning till around noon. Uh, we're gonna clean up just a few last areas for spring. Uh, so it'd be great. The more people we have, uh, the easier it goes. Uh, VBS is coming right up as well. That's on June 11th is the starting date, runs through Thursday, June 15th. Uh, there is still time to pre-register. Uh, pre-registration closes June 4th, so we've still got another week and a half uh, to get registration in for Vacation Bible School. Uh, the garage sale, uh, gathering the items and getting them ready continues at pace. Uh, please continue to hold off on large items and clothing. Uh, for just another week and a half or two weeks. Uh, June 1st is when our, our team that handles garage sale is really welcoming those items to come in. We're still trying to handle just the small items right now. Uh, please continue your donations to Youth Emergency Services. Uh, our partnership with them, our, our mission with them is lasting the entire month of May. Uh, and. Speaking of mission work, uh, we are back serving on the at the Stevens Center on Wednesday the 31st. Uh, that is again just a week and a half away. We still need a few items uh, for the meal, so if you have those and are so led, uh, please bring them in. Uh, also so that everyone knows, uh, Friday is the last day of school for the elementary school, so the parking lot, they're going to use our parking lot for some overflow pickup. Uh, so if you are coming down Friday afternoon, uh, be aware that the parking may be limited there and that the church office will be closed on Memorial Day, uh, which is not this Monday, it's not tomorrow, it's a week from tomorrow. Uh, but be aware that the church office will be closed on Memorial Day. And I think that is all I am. So please rise in body or spirit and join me in our opening prayer. Living and gracious God, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have brought us out to a spacious place where we are called to live as those redeemed. Empower us by your spirit to keep your commandments that we may show forth your love with gentle word and reverent deed to all your people. Amen. And join us in our opening hymn, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. It's in your hymnal number 312. 
mercy and justice, about mercy and justice, and our church was picked as one of the churches in Omaha, and then Tribe Community was picked as well, and so they will be doing different things with our congregation, and so we will welcome them next week into our church, along with you all wearing red, so what a great day. Um, hopefully they will wear red as well. All right, let us go to our God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, on this day that we know as Ascension Sunday, We pray that as Jesus' request to be at the right hand of God was fulfilled, that we pick up where Jesus and his disciples left off and continue to bring light and hope and peace to this world. God, as we move toward Pentecost, this last Sunday of Eastertide, we pray that we know what it means to be the church. And we know that being the church is our responsibility into the world. It is not just coming into the building, it is taking ourselves out into the world to be Jesus' hands and feet. And for that, we give you thanks. God, we have many prayers of folks who are recovering from surgeries, broken bones. God, we continue to pray for Michael and Terry and Kim. God, we ask that you continue to give these folks hope and strength. God of love, God, we give thanks this morning for MJ, for watching her walk down the aisle, for her continued strength, for her body continuing to heal and her mind being persistent. God, we give you thanks for her and we give you thanks for Paige. God, we pray for all of the folks that are helping her get to the place that she is and will continue to be. God of love. God, we pray for those who are in hospice. We pray for those who are taking care of people who are in hospice. We pray for the families of those whose family members are in hospice. We pray for Donna and Dave that you continue to give them peace and strength. We ask prayers for Heather Diggs as you give her peace and that her time left here on earth is filled with joy and love. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for all of those who have lost loved ones whether it be to disease, war, mental health. God, we pray for the families. We pray that you give them strength, and we pray that they find community as they grieve. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for all of those who are in war-torn countries 
or are in countries of political unrest. We pray for those who are in places of natural disasters. God, we pray for these folks who are dealing with this upheaval of life. We pray that they know you. We pray that those on the ground that are helping them, that they give hope and strength. We pray for those who have lost loved ones because of this, their times in these places. God, we pray that community will surround them as they grieve. We pray that you keep all of the workers who are on the ground strength. We pray to keep them safe. And we pray for those that are there to give them courage. God of love. God, we pray for all of those who take care of us, our hospital staff, our first responders. God, we pray that you keep these folks full of strength and hope. God of love. God, we pray for all of those who are in the military and for their families. God, we pray that they will be kept safe, that they will have courage. God of love. God, we pray for this church. We pray that in all things that we do, that we glorify your name. We pray for our ministry team. God, the work that the team is doing is awesome. And we pray that as we continue forward with new ways and new ideas, that they will enliven folks, that folks will be led, and their hearts will be warmed. God of love. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being able to come here and to hear your word and then being able to take it out into the world and put it into practice. God, we pray all of this in your son Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise and bow your spirit to the reading of the scripture. Our New Testament lesson for today comes from 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on God, because God cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary and the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you've suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to God's eternal glory in Christ, will restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen. 
And our gospel lesson for today comes from the book of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, God, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, God, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on the behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. God, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. For the word of God in and around us. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Lion King the movie. Okay, all right. So if you haven't, you're going to be lost. But if you have, well, here we go. So there's this scene in The Lion King where Rafiki tells the adult Simba. So Rafiki is the, he's a baboon, right? Yeah, baboon. Simba is the big lion. And Simba is grieving the death of his father, Mufasa. And that he knows Rafiki is telling the adult Sim Simba where his father is. And he takes Simba to a pool of water and tells him to look down. And Simba complains, that's not my father, that's just my reflection. No, look harder. Rafiki says. And as he looks, Simba begins to recognize his father in his own reflection. You see, Rafiki hums, he lives in you. In the gospel lesson for today, that is what the author of John is telling us, that Jesus lives in us. So here we are, Jesus is hours away from the crucifixion, and he's praying for his disciples. Now, I know that we have already celebrated Easter, but the lectionary text puts the scripture at the end of the Easter season. And some of the disciples still cannot figure out what's going on. Some of the disciples do know what's going on. Some are just confused, and others of them are just in this state of panic. All throughout the Gospel of John, the writer makes fairly explicit references to Jesus' death. It wasn't like the writer of John all of a sudden has Jesus telling the disciples that he was going to die, but they still forgot to listen. So Jesus is praying in verses 1 through 11 here, offering them some comfort because you need comfort when someone is going to die. Death is not easy for the living, and yet Jesus also wants to challenge them. So Jesus basically tells them that he wants to go be with God, and by being with God, Jesus will no longer be on earth. And he's telling the disciples that he has taught them what they need to know. And Jesus tells them that God lives in them, that they and all of us are created by God to be in relationship with God. 
And that is now the disciples' job to go show the world how to live the lives that Jesus wants us to live. So Jesus wanted the disciples to know that to know Jesus was to know God. Nancy Ramsey says that Jesus' final hopes are not a celebration of himself, but the recognition of his life and ministry are windows into God's love and saving purposes. So Jesus prays that people will come to know God through him. So what does it mean to know God? Yes, we can read books about God, we can study the Bible, we can go to seminary, we can read books about God, and that is all fine and good. You'll be really knowledgeable about God, you could probably teach a class about God, you could probably even do a lecture about God. And you can debate with others about God, but will you know God? Ramsey goes on to say that knowing God, it's this experience that draws believers into this new reality in which the new order that will be shaped eternally by God's vision for love and justice and service can only be realized in relationship with each other and the community. Ramsey doesn't say that reading a book about God will shape God's vision. Ramsey doesn't say that you should go read your Bible or that you should go to seminary. Ramsey says it is in our relationship with others and our community that lets us see who God calls us to be. So even though Jesus is no longer on earth as a human, the community still has access to God. So how do we see God? And then Simba complains. That's not my father. That's just my reflection. No, look harder, Rafiki says. And as he looks, Simba begins to recognize his father in his own reflection. You see, Rafiki hums, he lives in you. So how do we see God? Look in the mirror. Look in a pool of water. Look at your neighbor. Look at the person to your right. Look at the person to your left. The person behind you. After you leave here, look at the face of the person who is taking your lunch order. Or in line who is, or if you're in line for coffee, look at the face of your barista, there is God. Lindsay Jordy writes that Jesus' disciples don't know how to continue Jesus' mission in the faith of his death and departure. John's readers are dealing with this very real challenge of trying to live out a mission of love for the world while feeling the loss of their leaders. And the hope comes in the second half of our final verse, I am no longer in the world but they are in the world. We become, you and I, become the incarnate love of God. And it's our connection with God, to God, that we extend God's mission. And when we have lost our way, or we feel alone or defeated, remember that we are all connected to God. And the last sentence in John says that Jesus says, and now, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, holy God. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. So Jesus is no longer in the world. God is flesh, in flesh is over, and Jesus is seated at the right hand of God, and now it's our turn. So what Jesus was teaching and doing is now left up to us, and it's our job to be the light of Christ. So Pentecost is next week. Pentecost is an exciting time because it is noted as the birth of the church. It's a festive day where folks wear red, there's doves, and the Holy Spirit's moving. 
And as we go about this week, let's think about what it means to be church. That the church is a community of not only that not only follows Jesus in the sense of listening to him and learning from him, but we also are a community who follows Jesus in the sense that we are the ones left to do the work. You and I and others are the ones that are left to do the work. We take up his mantle and carry on his life and his work. So also that God's glory and God's joy and our joy might be complete. Not just here and there, but to the ends of the earth. We are the ones. That knows that God lives in us and by our actions we show others God's love through acts of service and acts of mercy and acts of justice and acts of love. Love in action. So what are we waiting for? Are we waiting for God to show up and give us the tools that we need to carry on? Are we waiting for God to make a post on Facebook? Hey, it's God. Do this. Or are we waiting for God to put an ad in the newspaper or rent a billboard or send us a letter telling us exactly what to do? I hope that you all are not waiting for that. God lives in each and every one of us. And I pray that when you look at yourself in the mirror or when you look at another person, you can see the love of God. We have all that we need to show others God's love in ways that will bring abundant eternal life to all the world. We have to decide to show that to others. Let it be so. Amen. It is the Praise Band Sunday, and we are going to hear what a beautiful name. And if you know the song, sing it. Thank you. 
Well, I agree with that statement. What a wonderful name it is. As we go forward this week, let us remember that we are the church, that God lives in us, and because God lives in us, we need to share that love, that hope, that strength, that light with others. Go in peace.